What thank you, Christ, and who is son in thee? An age-old question has been asked through the days. Years after years, the same question has been raised. What thank you, Christ, who is son in thee? All through the ages, people have wondered who, who he was, what he was. The argument has come back and forth. Was he the son of God? How could he be? How could the virgin birth? And you know what? After a survey was made, according to government statistics, after the survey was made, there were 70% of the Protestant preachers denied the virgin birth of Jesus. Would you think of it? No wonder we had about 13 million infidels last year. Because that's the fundamental part of the Christian religion is based upon the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. If he was not born the virgin birth, he was not the Son of God. And if he was born the virgin birth, he would have to be the Son of God. For no other one could bring him here, for God is the only creator there is. And now, let's look into the scriptures just for a few moments. Some time ago, I was talking to a, a man, a hunting partner that hunts with me. I hadn't known him but just a few hours. I'd met him on the road up to Colorado. I was going back to, to the mountain, elk hunting, getting away to relax a little, back to myself. He picked me up, and we got on a horse. He said, can you ride? I said, well, I, I can hang on a little. And he said, well, jump up the saddle. And he had a couple of horses. So we went riding along. He said, what's your occupation? I said, I'm the state game warden in Indiana. He said, well, there's never a game warden ever welcome in this country. I said, well, I'm from Indiana. I have nothing to do with your laws and rules here. I said, that's just on a side, so I won't have to take up offerings. I said, my church, I'm a minister. He looked around at me and said, you look too bright for that. And I said, uh, well, uh, I'm not exchanging the compliment, my brother, but uh, I feel like if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be bright. <laughs> so he said, uh, well, he said, I, I just want to talk to you a while. And I said, now, I want to argue, because the scriptures are not to argue. They're to be lived. That's, that's, you live me a sermon. That's the best thing. I'd rather see one live in the woods, hear one preach, wouldn't you? Live a sermon. Your written epistle. Read of all men. He said, well, what do you think about that virgin birth? He said, do you believe that's the truth? I said, I know it's the truth. And he said, oh, you're just mistaken. He said, there, there couldn't be such a thing happen. I said, but there was. He said, well, I want to ask you something. He said, now, I want to tell you in the beginning, I do not believe it. And I, I really think in the bottom of your heart, you don't believe it. I said, but in my heart, if I know my heart, I do believe it. And he said, he said, all right. He said, I can scientifically prove to you that the birth of birth is impossible. I said, I have nothing to do with science. I said, we, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Not prove that he is, but believe that he is. And so he said, well, he said, look, anything that can't be proved by science is not real. I said, oh, my, I'm going to sure disagree with you there. I said, the only real things there is are the things that science know nothing about. He said, oh, my, we're really getting apart, aren't we? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, look here. I said, I want to ask you something. Do you love your wife? He said, yes, sir. I said, show me scientifically what love is. Pull that part out, let me feel it, and see what it is. What part of you is the love that loves your wife, makes her different than any other woman? There you are. I said, you believe in personality? He said, yes. I said, scientifically, show me in a man what personality. Can't be done. I said, personality and love and those things, God, Christ, Holy Spirit, angel, all those things that are real are things who cannot, which cannot be scientifically proven. When God made man, he made him first in his own image, which is the spirit. Then he put man in five senses, not to declare him, but to contact his earthly home. Scientific part of a man, see, taste, feel, smell, and hear, is only to contact his earthly home. The inside man, which is spirit, contacts God. Science knows nothing about it. And they set up things in the first year that had to alter it again, take it down, but God's Word set up and established forever. 
never alters. It's God's word forever. Now, he said, well, look, he said, that virgin at first. said, do you really believe that that's the truth? I said, yes, sir. I believe it. He said, preacher, that's against all scientific rules, that virgin at first. He said, it can't be. He said, corn, corn has to pull. Trees has to pull. Everything, the pollen has to go from one to another, from male to female, even in trees and everything else. If you don't, it don't bear. I said, but you forget, sir, he's God the Creator. He said, well, it just can't be so, sir. And I said, well, I, I beg your pardon, it's already proved. The, the proof of the pudding is eating of it. And I said, it is so. And he said, well, I look here. He said, don't you believe that was a little slip up like uh, Joseph was really the father and that just, I said, no, sir, I believe that was God's son and Joseph had no more to do with it than I had. That's right. I said, I believe it was the son of God. And he, it was the son of God. And he said, well, look here, he said, uh, I tell you that it, it just, I believe it's a little slip up. I said, let me tell you something. Do you believe he had a, actually an earthly mother? He said, yes, I believe Mary was his mother. But Joseph was his father. I said, then you say it's impossible for a woman here on earth to bring forth a child without knowing an earthly mate. He said, yes, sir. That's exactly right. I said, then I'm going to ask you one question. If you, ask, you answer this, then I'm going to agree with you. If you tell me, you just told me the first man come off of a, a poly wall, you know, or a piece off a star or something. I said, I want to ask you something. If you tell me that a baby can't be born here on earth without uh, actual contact from the male sex, I want to ask you this, where did the first man come from? Who was his father and his mother? Let him be tadpole, monkey, whatever he might be. He had to have a pack in a mammy somewhere according to your teaching. That's right. Who was his father and mother? He's never answered me yet. No, sir. He can't. No, sir. Let him be whatever he might be. If he's an insect, polywog, jellyfish, whatever he was, according to their talk, he had to have a daddy and a mother somewhere. I say that he was a virgin born son of God created by Jehovah. I believe that God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Give the truth of it and worship him in the spirit. Now, and here's why I believe that Virgin Mary was just a little girl, 17, 18 years old, was going with a man, Joseph. And I believe God, the Creator, overshadowed that girl by the Holy Spirit, his being, and she conceived and brought a child, Christ Jesus. We know that the, the baby, the blood cell, comes from the male sex. The female has nothing to do with it. He's only incubator. Look, you take if a hen, a hen can lay an egg, and if that hen hasn't been with the male bird, it will never hatch. It's not fertile. An old mother bird can make a nest and lay a nest full of eggs, and she can just hover them and hold them and squeeze them and sit on there and starve herself till she gets the poor, she can't get off the nest. That's right. Covering them eggs and keeping them warm. But if she hasn't been with the male bird, them eggs will lay right there in her nest and rot. They'll never have. That's right. That's what I think about a whole lot of these old, old formal churches. A desk full of rotten eggs. You can hug them, squeeze them around, they have been in contact with the Holy Spirit and born again. You've got a nest full of rotten eggs. You don't believe or nothing else. My will just come out and start the nest over again. That's right. Get people who's born again and know what they're talking about. No matter if he's a deacon, preacher, or whatever he is. Amen. Don't get scared. I don't know where I am now. This, this is, I'm not excited. I just love the Lord, don't you? Sure you do. All right. Now, that's true. Then the Holy Spirit, God, the Creator, overshadowed the little Virgin Mary and created in her womb a blood cell that produced the Son of the living God. Man had nothing to do with it. There it is. And in there she brought forth this baby, and he was the blood of his father created, not sexual desire, but created. God Jehovah created that. We're born by sexual desire, and he shed freely 
that precious holy blood on Calvary's cross to stand between the sinner and God, making a way of sinner, a holy man through his blood by the offering of it. Hallelujah. That's the blood this afternoon that heals the sick and cleans the sinner and makes him a new creature. Only through that, that blood alone, that's the reason we can stand on faith knowing where we are, for we believe it. The attributes of it cleans us up from a life of sin and makes us a new creature in Christ Jesus. Devils scream and holler and come out, cripples walk, blind, see death here. Sinners, laden in sin, are made ladies and gentlemen in society. Amen. There you are. That's whose son he was. He was a son of God. Amen. I believe it with all my heart. God is a spirit, not a man. If he was a man, Christ was born sexual desire. He was not a man. He is a spirit. And he overshadowed the Virgin Mary, and she brought forth the Son by a creative power, which is Jehovah God. Amen. Then that blood is unadulterated, and it answers in my place this afternoon. It answers in your place. Two years ago when Mayo Brothers looked me in the face and said, Reverend Branham, you can't live. I accepted the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm better off today than I ever was in all of my life because it's the unadulterated blood of Jesus Christ. One of the best doctors that could be got for congressmen up shall wheelchairs, cases, and everything else, when everything has failed, and when his young bones looked like would have come together and everything would have been all right, when he was a young man, but God let him live till he's old and his old, old bones was brittle and everything else, then the unadulterated blood of Jesus Christ answered a Calvary for his healing. There he is today like a new man. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's what I believe he was. Oh, how we could go on ages would only tell what, what he is, to explain what he is and who he is. Let's call some questionnaires for a few minutes. Let's ask some of his enemies. If anybody would know, let's see some of his enemies, see what they testify. Let's ask some of his friends first. Let's go back and ask the first man, if we could call him on the stand this afternoon, say, Adam, come here a minute. I want to ask you something. Whose son was that? Who was this baby? The world arguing so much about the virgin birth and so forth. Who is he? Adam would say he's the seed of the woman that was the bruising serpent's head. I believe he'd give the answer. He did in the Bible. Adam, what do you think about him? If I'd ask Moses, the great prophet, Moses, what do you think about him, Jesus Christ? You know what he would say? Moses would say, he's the one that I spoke of. The Lord your God will rise the prophet up like unto me. And if the people won't believe him, they'll be cut off. That's what I think about him. All right, we'd ask, we go ask Ezekiel. He was a great prophet. Ezekiel, what do you think about him? He said, I saw him. He looked like a wheel in the middle of the wheel, turning way up in the middle of the air. What do you think about him, prophet Ezekiel? Hebrew children, what do you think about him? They say, one day he weighed down in Babylon. We were down there in captivity. And the first thing you know, there was a proclamation went out that whosoever would not bow to an image should be thrown in a fiery furnace. And we purposed in our heart with Daniel that we would not defile ourselves. So when the time came and the horns blow and the music started, we turned our back to the image to serve God. One day they had the furnace seven times hotter than it ever was hit. They marched us on the gangplank. Let's look at that just for a few moments. Why, you talk about whenever you speak of Jesus Christ and his blood and his power, the devil turns the heat on you right then. Don't you think that you're going to get by and must I be carried home to heaven on a fire bed of ease while others fought to win the prize and save you, little seed? Though I must fight if I should reign, increase my courage, Lord. That's it. Support me with thy word. I can see him down there that morning when King Nebuchadnezzar said, We'll cut out all this your holy roller shines we're having down here. We'll burn it out of them. Could you imagine a fire burning fire? Well, you can't burn the Holy Ghost out of a man. The fire itself. All right, I can see him. Heat the furnace. The skies are black. Seven times hotter than it ever was. And King Nebuchadnezzar get him a chair and watch to see what would take place. The crucial hour come when they were tied their hands behind him. 
on the death march up to the place to drop into the furnace. And here Shadrach say to Meshach, listen, brother, are you sure you're freed up? Yes, I'm all right. They said, are you ready to compromise, boys? He said, our God is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, but nevertheless, we'll not bow down to your image. God, give us some more people like that in New York. Not only New York, but everywhere, who's willing to take God at his word and stand there. Let come, let go, what may stand with Christ. All right, he may be late, he may be this, that, other, but don't worry, he'll be there. Just right. And I can see him going up and they begin to get fainty and sick. The band of the spears behind them push them. They're all most let's look at a little drama here for a few moments. Look back at them people stand back and say, That's what will happen to them, holy rollers. That's what takes place with them people who call themselves the servants of the God who can't be seen with the lack of the image was that they serve. So that's what will take care of them. And as it walked up, I can see them getting kind of deathly sick. But they knew that God was able, but nevertheless, they wasn't going to bow down. Then just about two steps is left. Look at them walking. And there they go on, and the man's begin to faint who's pushed them on. That looks like a pretty black picture for a believer, doesn't it? Let's turn our camera for a few minutes. Let's look up to glory. All the time there's anything going on down here, there's something going on up there. Always. I can see him sitting there with his priestly garment. My the first thing you know, coming to his right, I see a great angel coming. His name's Gabriel. You know, heaven's full of angels. Don't you believe it? I see Gabriel run up there and pull his sword, say, Master, I've served you since the day that you created me. I hold the lightnings in my hands. Look what's going on down there in Babylon. They're fixing to burn up three believers. Let me go down there this morning. I'll show Babylon which side of the bread's got butter on it. I believe he could have done it, don't you? I can hear him say, let me go down there. I'll clean Babylon up this morning. I can hear him say, yes, Gabriel, you've been a righteous angel. You've obeyed me since the day I created you, but I can't let you go. Then I see him shield his sword, stand back to attention to his side. Up from the side comes another angel. His wormwood, the one who has control of the water, said, Master, have you looked down in Babylon? Why, you give me the jurisdiction over the Andalusian destruction. I broke up the springs of the deep and rained the waters out of heaven. I washed the earth off. Let me go down there this morning. I washed Babylon off the face of the earth. I believe he could have done it. I can hear him say, Well, you've been a good angel. You've done just what I told you in the Andalusian destruction. You cleared the earth out and saved Noah. But I can't let you go. He said, Have you considered him? that I've watched him all night long. Oh, my. His eyes on the sparrow, I know he watches me. He knows what you're doing, what you're thinking. I hear him say, I've watched him all night long. Oh, my. If he was concerned about three, how about the thousands that sit here when I is in trouble? Sure he is. I hear him say, I'd let you all go, but I can't for I'm going myself. That's a man-sized job, so I'm going down. I can see him rise from his chair, his priestly garments drop around him. I can see him look around way back over here in the north is a big thunderhead. I can hear him say, come here, east wind, west wind, north and south. Everything in the heavens obey him. Man knows more than he does. Man tries to figure out the heavens obey him. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And there, east wind, west wind, north and south. Get out of that thunderhead over on earth. I want to take a trip this morning. I can see him go over there and roll under that big thunderhead, come down along to the side of the throne. He stepped off of his throne onto that big thunderhead like a chariot, reached over and hooked them four winds to the clouds out there, go to ride like a chariot, get a hold of the zigzag lightning out of the skies, crack it. Hallelujah. One step more, Hebrew children will be in a fiery furnace. And he passes by the sea of life, picks the palm off the sea of life, and they made their lips. Last step! There he appeared in the fiery furnace with a pan panning back the breeze. What do you think of him, Hebrew children? He said he looked like the Son of God to me when he was sitting there. I believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. One like the Son of God, what do you think of him? I say, Isaiah, what do you think of him? Another prophet. What do you think of him? You're a major prophet. He said he's 
the counselor, the prince of peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Unto us a child is born, given the government shall be upon his shoulders. On of his kingdom there shall be no end. What do you think of him? Whose son is he? I believe he was the son of God, don't you? I say, Daniel, you stood there one day. What do you think about the son of God? What do you think about Jesus Christ? Was he the Christ? What do you think about him? He said, one day, Brother Branham, I was viewing the ages. Hallelujah. I was viewing the ages as God was passing by me in the vision. I was watching the ages pass by. I seen all the kings come to the great kingdoms and so forth. And then I beheld till there was a stone cut out of the mountain without hands and rolled into the heaven, torn down, and it became a great mountain that filled all the earth. He said, that was Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Daniel, let's ask John the Baptist. Jesus said he was the major of all the prophets. What do you think about him, John? Look at John when he was standing there. And Jesus said there never was a man born of a woman as great as John. What do you think about him? You were right there. You was his second cousin. What do you think about him? Here's what he said. I knew him not. But he that said to me in the wilderness, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit the city and remaining, he is the one that was that I, with the Holy Ghost and with power whose hand is in his hand. What do you think about him, John? Let's call another witness. I don't believe there's better a witness that ever lived than his mother. That's right. Mary, you're the one who brought him here. Let's ask Mary, the virgin, whose son is he? Mary, you ought to know you're his mother. She said, I knew not a man. Hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost overshadowed me. The Holy Spirit will be called the Son of God. I believe in the Son of God. Don't you? Yes, sir. Whose son is he? That's that, that Roman soldier who pierced his side, seeing his blood come pouring out. What do you think about him? He said, surely that was the Son of God. Let's think of Judas, his enemy. Let's see what his enemy said. Judas, what do you think about him? Oh, he said, I have betrayed innocent blood. Get me a rope that I can hang myself and hear the evidence of this your money. I have betrayed innocent blood. Let's look at Pilate, that great lawyer, great man of that day, a proclamator. Let's ask him, what do you think about him, Pilate? Come on out of hell and know he's up here. You say, was in hell? Sure he was. You judge. Say, what do you say? I ain't judging him, but by his fruits he's known. All right, what do you think about him, Pilate? Sitting there, he said, oh, one day I was sitting there. I find no fault in him. Let's look at this. Turn his scene just a minute. I can see him standing there looking. Looks around his angered eyes, looking at him, trying to find something wrong with him. Then he thought he'd find some favor with Caesar and so forth. I hear a horse coming. Listen at it, it's coming up the road. Hard as it can come. What is it? It's one of the temple guards. He jumps off this mount, runs up before the pilot, bows himself, and hands him a note. Let's see, pilot. He opens up the note, begins to read it. His face turns white. His eyes set. His knees buckle together. What's the matter? Let's look over his shoulder and see what it is. It's from his wife, my beloved husband, a heathen. She was my beloved husband, had nothing to do with this just man for today. I've suffered many things in the dream. He was white in his face. His bones went out of joint. His knees buckled together. That great proclamator. What do you think of him, Pilate? I wash my hands. No, you never. He still on your hands. He's on the hands of every man this afternoon that hears the message of Jesus Christ. That's right. Oh, my. What do you think of him? Whose son is he? Why in birth? He was wonderful in his birth. Do you believe it? In his birth, he was wonderful. In wisdom, there was never a man who spoke like this man. Do you believe that? In sacrifice, he was perfect. In death, he was a redeemer. When he rose, he proved he was God. Hallelujah. That's right. He said he was. What he showed her, he said he was God. He looked like God. He acted like God. He preached like God. He rose like God. He was God. Hallelujah. Emmanuel is made on his head, walking among the man. He was God, Emmanuel. He fulfilled the Father. He thrilled the hearts of the poor and great men down through the ages. And every man that ever mattered to a hill of beast was somebody who put their trust in him as the Son of God. So Jackson was asked one time, why can you stand with a small group of men? And asked, how can you stand like that? And with opposition so great, 
He kicked his boot on the ground. He said, there's never a glass of water goes to my lips. That's how I thank Jesus Christ for it. That's why George Washington before Valley Road and he used to the one. Let's ask the poet, what do you think about him? He's through the hearts of the poet. Let's ask today, Eddie Newton, what do you think about him? Newton, what do you think? He was in the room one day, inspiration struck him. Let's see what you think about him. He picked up the pen, he wrote, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like he. I once was lost, but now I'm found with life.